All right, so today I want to talk about tool calling or function calling. When you make a request to OpenAI, for example, for a completion and you include the option for the model to ask to use a tool. And so to start out, let's just run through a scenario of this. And so I've got some code here on the left. I've also got a browser tab open up to Google. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to use this code and make a request to OpenAI. And this code then is going to give OpenAI a tool that if it requests it, will then be able to run JavaScript in my browser over here. And so the first thing I'm going to ask it to do is to delete everything on the page. And actually, before I use OpenAI, I'm going to first use Olama here. So I've got a toggle here to switch between Olama locally or use OpenAI with GPT-40. I'll start out with Olama, though. This is definitely a task it can handle. This is Olama with Llama 3.1. You'll need that for tool calling. And so if I come over to the browser here, I've got Google loaded. The very first request is delete everything on the page. All right, so let's try this here with Olama. Now, in this case, it didn't actually ask to use a tool, so I'll just run this again here. If you see tool use, you'll see a response for what the tool did in red. And so there you go. You can see in this case, it used a tool that ran some JavaScript code here. And then the response to that, or actually just executing that code, led to the page contents being deleted over here. And so if I want, I could try this again here, refresh, run this again here. We'll see if it gets it twice in a row. And there you go, it gets it twice in a row. And each time it's doing it slightly differently. So that's one of the observations I have with tool use is that it's not something that you're going to typically get a predictable result to. And of course, that's because variability and responses. And so that's just something to be aware of. Now let's try something else here. So now that you've got the basics of this down, let's come over and let's try a different request. So in addition to modifying the page, of course, this could query information about the page. So in this case, I could prompt for what is the website. So let's try this one. Run that again with Llama 3.1. And in this case, you can see it gets back a title of Google after returning document.title here. That's the JavaScript code it decided to execute. So it gets back a title of Google, and then you can see it's identifying the website as Google. So part of the benefit of tool use is that you can not only have the model come up with code to run, you can then run that code, get back a response, and then have it interpret that response and type up a message to the user. And of course, this is a very trivial example. Nonetheless, it does a good job of showing you how you can not only modify a page with this, you could get it to query information about the page. And so let's come over to my request here. Let's see if we can do something a little bit more interesting. Let's have it navigate me to a page for weather information for my city. So we'll change the prompt in that case. We'll come back here and we'll run that again, Llama 3.1. So this is pretty impressive that this is working locally. Let's see if it can actually change the page. Okay, it changed the page there. So it navigated me to a different website. I didn't have to ask for the website. It came up with that as weather.com. And did it get the right city? Well, not quite exactly. It's got Brandsville, Missouri. Maybe I wonder where it came up with that. I asked for Kansas City, Missouri. Well, you can see in terms of tool use that sometimes it doesn't quite get things right, but it's still interesting nonetheless. All right, so let's try one more here. Maybe we'll go with the next one here, which is take me to a funny website. All right, so let's run that. Let's see if we get here. Oh, man, it looks like it didn't work. And I don't know why it's asking for, in this case, it asked to get the location of the page. It didn't actually change the location. Let's try that again, though. Let's see if it'll get it a second time here. Didn't navigate me anywhere. Okay, now let's change the page here to, I guess, 9gag.com. I've never heard of this before, but hey, it works. All right, so now I want to take a look at a request that will add a keyboard shortcut for Control-Shift-K add that. And then when I hit that keyboard shortcut, I want it to select or focus on a text area with an ID of APJFQB, which is google.com here. It's the search text box here. So I just found that ID just to simplify this a little bit here. And then I want it to basically focus that text box. So over here, I'm going to go ahead on the right here, we're going to run this and this is with Llama 3.1 again. Just see what it comes up with. All right. And in that case, it didn't do what I asked. You can see if I scroll up here, the request for the tool use, it's suggesting to use document get element by ID, which is halfway there. And it's asking to focus the item right now. So it didn't add the keyboard shortcut, but you can see over on the right that it focused on the text box. So I'll click off of that. See if I can reproduce that again here. Watch the text box and see if it triggers that to be focused. So I'll run this and then we'll just wait over here. Okay, you can see it put the focus back on the text box. So that's not what I asked for. It is half of the way there. So instead of using Llama in this case, this is kind of where Llama breaks down at least a smaller model that you can run locally. 
In this case, let's go ahead and flip this over for this next test here. And we'll have it use GPT-40. So I'll use OpenAI. We'll do the exact same thing here. I'll refresh the page so nothing's modified. I'll click off the text box just in case it decides to take the lazy approach and just focus it right now. And let's see what happens here. All right. This looks a little bit more promising. It's adding an event listener. So let's come over here, Control Shift K. There you go. It focuses on the text box. So if I click off of it, you can see the cursor is not flashing. Control Shift K. There you go. It focuses it. So in this case, GPT 4.0 actually came up with valid JavaScript to add a keyboard handler. And so at this point in time, probably not something you want to rely on being able to reproduce this every time just because of variability. Probably in this case, and this is one of the problems I have with tool use, is that when you come up with an answer to a request, you probably want to be able to save that. It's kind of like compiling code. You want to be able to take that natural language and compile it down to something useful. And once you've verified it's useful, you probably don't want to have to compile it down every time and cross your fingers to make sure it actually generates something that's useful. And so at this point in time, you could lift something like this, take it out of here, and maybe put it into a tamper monkey script, and then permanently you'd have this keyboard shortcut added. And of course, you might want to deal with some of the problems with this, for example, that the ID of the text box could change. All right, so that is tool use in a nutshell. I will say one thing I was hoping to be able to accomplish, though I'm not certain I'm prompting this correctly, or maybe it's just that tool use isn't that aggressive in terms of accomplishing a given request. I wanted to be able to have it remove a paywall. Let's see what happens here when I do this here. This has just failed every single time. The impetus for doing this was hopefully I could get Hopefully I could get OpenAI or ChatGPT basically to act as if it was a browser extension and start doing things to modify the page. The issue is it's just not very aggressive about figuring that out. So anyways, I've got a request here, remove the paywall on this page. I'll come over here. This is Epic Times that I used previously in some of my previous demos. I'm hoping that it can actually get rid of this paywall here. Let's actually close the dev tools. So let's see what happens here. So make sure I set that. Yep. All right. So we're using GPT-40. Let's go ahead and run this here. It's of course going to blow up. It's not going to do what I asked. And for whatever reason, it just comes up with some crappy attempt to do it. And one of the things I did want to show here, you actually can see there's multiple rounds of tool use here. In other words, I made a request here. The assistant said, OK, go ahead and use this tool for me. It then gets back the tool response. And then because that didn't do what it wanted, it can see an error here, JavaScript error. It then tries something else. And so the assistant returns another tool to use. It then gets a tool response there. And of course, that didn't work either. And so now it's moving on to yet another tool request. So serial use of tools. And this is something I've really only observed when it comes to GPT-40. Very, very rare for me to get this to happen with Llama 3.1. Nonetheless, it is an interesting paradigm that it can troubleshoot what it's trying to do and try different approaches until it can find what it wants. Because in a scenario like this, where I've asked it to get rid of a paywall, first, it needs to find the paywall. That could be several rounds of tool use. Once it finds it, then it has to devise the JavaScript to get rid of it. And again, that could be several rounds of tool use if it gets the JavaScript wrong. And then once that's gone, there might be some sort of last verification or summary of what it did. And so you can see there's going to be a lot of rounds of messages flying back and forth. Because at the end of the day, in this case, my code is set up to be the executor of tools. And so the model has to go back and forth with me basically to run the tools and get the responses and then finally interpret those responses. And you can see it did that down at the bottom here in the last message. This comes after the last tool use. You can see in this case, it's actually pointing out that the modal is not being identified by its initial queries. And it's asking, could you try running the following script to identify more details? It's interesting that it didn't then want to run this script and test out the result of this and see what happens. Seems like at some point after serial tool use, things just fall apart. So if things aren't done properly on the first or a second tool use, chances are things are just not going to work after that point in time, at least as far as the models are trained today. I'm sure in the future, these models will be trained to work on much more rounds of tools. They can also work with parallel tool calls, so it can actually request parallel tools. I don't think I saw any of those today in any of the examples, but that's another possibility. All right, so that is an overview of tool use, at least in terms of the end user experience. I could go into the code here and explain how it works. I think that might get a bit too complicated, though. You can always check out the code here. I've got a Git repo for this. So this is out in my examples repo. You can find this. So if you'd like to try this out or look at it or explore it or run it yourself, take a look at this. And then let me know in the comments below what you think of this. Is there something you could find a use for for tool calling? Let me know down below.